Hello everyone, welcome to Hindustan video lecture series. I am Dr. Jesse Ruby, Professor, Head of the Department, Civil Engineering. Today I will be talking about an interesting topic and an important topic, Introduction to Structural Analysis. When we tell structural analysis, there are two words in that, or there are two terms. One is structure, other one is analysis. Let us see what is the meaning of these two terms. What do you mean by structure? Structure is nothing but it is any form of construction or it is a connection of any parts, connected parts to form a structure. The purpose of the structure is to carry the loads. So, what do you mean by structure? A structure is a form of construction which carries the load. So, let us see what are the different types of loads that is acting on that particular structure. The loads can be the dead load that means the self weight of the structure, the live load, the moving loads. Suppose if you take an example, if you take a classroom, the students, the desk, benches, the shelves, these are all the live loads that we consider. For example, if it is a library, the bookshelf and the books are the live loads. Then we have the snow loads or the earthquake load, wind load and the uh, water pressure, wave pressure, all these external forces are called loads. Now, different types of loads are again it is there, we call it as tensile loads or a compressive load. It depends upon the type of way the load is acted on that particular structure. Uh, the, the best example for a tensile load or the tensile strength is a spider's web. If you see that the spider, the weight of the spider and the prey, it uh, the, the web carries the tensile strength. And another good example for a structure is our human skeleton, which maintains the shape of the body. So, the structures can be classified into n number of types. The major classification in structural analysis is the structures can be classified into determinate structure and indeterminate structures. So, what let us see what is the meaning of these two types of structures. So, determinate means if you take a particular structure and if you can find out the unknown forces in that structure using the equilibrium equations. So, which are the equilibrium equations? You have already learned that we know that sigma m is equal to 0, sigma h is equal to 0 and sigma v is equal to 0. So, if using these three equilibrium equations, if we can solve or we can find out the unknown forces in a structure, then we call that structure as a determinate structure. The example for an determinate structure is a simply supported beam. I will I'll draw you and I will give you an example. Then other one is the indeterminate structure. If you are unable to solve the unknowns using the equilibrium equations, we call that type of structures as indeterminate structures. Now, let us see what are the different types of how do you find out the determinate or indeterminate. We just take the case of a simply supported beam. What is the meaning of a simply supported beam? A beam which is supported one end with a hinged end and other end with a roller end. So, what happens to this? How many unknown forces are there? If I designate it as A, B. So, how many reactions are there at this support? It is a hinged support. It has a vertical reaction and it has a horizontal reaction. Similarly, roller support. It has only one vertical reaction. Why? Because it is, it is capable of moving in the horizontal direction. So, there is no reaction. So, totally how many unknowns are there? There are three unknowns. Equations available are 3. So, we call it as the static indeterminacy as the number of unknown forces minus equilibrium equations. So, we have 3 unknown forces three equations, it becomes 0. So, the static indeterminacy of that structure is 0. So, we call this structure as a determinate structure. So, simply supported beam is the best example for a determinate structure. Similarly, there is one more this is called cantilever. Cantilever one end is fixed and other end is free. So, fixed end will have three reactions, horizontal, vertical 
and there is a moment acting because it is held in position. It cannot rotate, it cannot translate, so it is completely restrained. So, three reactions are there. Here in this case again the static indeterminacy becomes 3 minus 3, 0. So, these are the two examples for a determinate structures. Other than these two, all other structures are indeterminate. So, we can take example of a continuous beam, a beam support on many supports. So, this is a indeterminate structure. We can find out how many, what is the degree of indeterminacy or we call it as static indeterminacy. So, how many supports? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, totally we have 4 unknown reactions here and we take 2 equilibrium equations. Why? Because we neglect the horizontal forces because since there is no external horizontal force here, we can remove the sigma h is equal to 0 can be neglected here. So, 2 reactions can be taken. So, the static indeterminacy is 2. So, this is how we can find out whether the structure is determinate or indeterminate. Now, we have seen what is the meaning of a structure and what are the different types of structures. Now, let us come back to the analysis part. What is the meaning of analysis? Analysis is nothing but when these loads that we have already explained, when it is acting on a particular structure, how the structure respond to it. So, analysis is the response of a structure for an external force. So, the external force can be anything, it can be the earthquake load or the wind load or the tsunami, whatever is the load that is acting on a structure, how the structure is going to respond. So, the response can be measured in terms of reflection or rotation or the shear force developed or the bending moment, any form of internal resistance that is developed in the structure due to the external force that is acting on it. So, analysis means measuring these terms, what is the how to measure the deflection, rotation and the shear force and the bending moment using various methods. We have many methods available for analysis. So, for example, if you take a tree, if a flexible tree when the wind is blowing, what will happen? It will have a sway. So, the sway can be, otherwise the, the same time, the same place if you say a stout, a big tree is there, the response of that tree for that same force may be less. So, depending upon the structure, the nature of the structure, the stiffness, the flexibility of the structure, the response will vary. So, we should, we will know that what are the different methods of analysis that is available for the structures. Mainly analysis, there are two categories are there, one is the or two methods are there, one is the classical methods, other one is the advanced methods. Classical method is the basic analysis methods, that is a, that is the earlier methods that is already available and advanced methods are for the complicated structures. So, in classical methods we have different methods available, that is the, the basic method is the principle of virtual work. Principle of virtual work, it is the Castiglione's theorem. Detailed description will be we will dis discussing in the next classes. Then we have the slope deflection method, moment distribution method. So, there are many methods available, the classical methods. In advanced methods, we have flexibility method and stiffness method. It is only a sample methods, there are many methods available for the structural analysis. How to choose this analysis? Which method we have to choose? So, that depends upon the type of structure, whether it is a determinate structure or it is an indeterminate structure. So, for choosing the analysis method, first to check is we have to find out whether the structure is stable or determinate. If it is determinate, using the normal equilibrium equation, you can solve and finish the analysis part. Then if it is indeterminate, you have to find out what is the static indeterminacy, what is the kinematic indeterminacy, all the unknown forces, displacements, everything you have to find out, then we have to choose the method. So, if the static indeterminacy is more, you have to go for the advanced methods. 
the it's a matrix methods of analysis these are the methods nowadays we are using it for the software there is no hand calculations available now everything is available in the software but we should know the basic concept of the analysis so that it can be get it from the classical methods of analysis so if the degree of freedom is more then we can go for the moment distribution method so today i have given you a brief introduction of the structural analysis so we have come to know that what is a structure what is an analysis so this is one of the important aspect of the construction stage so if any project is there if any project if you want to do a constructed building or a commercial building or a bridge the first stage is the planning second stage is you have to assume the design or a preliminary design you have to do it then the load calculations you have to do what are the loads supposed to act on that particular if it is a windy area you have to consider the wind if it is a seismic region you have to consider the earthquake loads so the load estimation has to be calculated the next part is the analysis structural analysis that's what we have discussed after the analysis the safety aspect serviceability aspect then we have to go to the construction project so before a construction starts the important step in that particular chain is the structural analysis once you do the analysis then the design part is there we can decide the reinforcement we can select the section everything can be done then the construction can be started so that's what we have discussed today so in a nutshell the structural analysis means the response of a structure for an external load that has to be calculated that's what we have discussed here thank you we will see you in the next meeting